So we, in the last time, we have discussed that what are the common indications when the PDFs are made and uh, what are the precautions that you uh, need to take to uh, get a proper smear and how to correlate the uh, blood smear findings with the CBC findings and the common artifacts that we encounter. So uh, all these things, uh, they are required before you start the proper assessment of the blood film. So today we will be uh, talking about the RBC morphology. So there are a lot of variation, the common, uh, as you already know, the normal morphology, we call it as normocytic, normochromic. So I will just discuss all the variations of uh, the RBC morphology that we can see that can help in diagnosing uh, some conditions, like uh, some are like really characteristic, some are non-specific, some are suggestive, some are diagnostic. So we will see which finding, uh, how to identify it and what is the importance of it. So with that, I will start. So as you all know, uh, normal RBC is uh, normocytic. We call it normocytic and the size is uh, around 7.5 micron. That is of the small lymphocyte nucleus. Just remember it's the size of the small lymphocyte nucleus, not small lymphocyte per se. And also you have to uh, search for the smallest lymphocyte and then compare the size of the cells with the, your RBC size. Then they are normochromic when the pale central area occupies the middle third in the cell monolayer. I will stress the cell monolayer. Last time we talked about it, uh, the area where the morphology is appearing best for the morphological assessment. So that is a part of the body where the cells are lying in the monolayer and not touching each other. So in that area, the RBCs, uh, if they are showing uh, around mid cent pale central area of in the middle third, it will be called a normochromic cell. So that is the normal morphology of an RBC that is normocytic, normochromic. So, but points to remember while describing RBC morphology, there are certain things that you need to uh, keep in your mind when you are describing that minor variation in shape, okay? So the shape is, normal shape is discoid. So that shape, minor variation in that shape, that is just fine. And moderate variation in size is normal for a healthy adult. And the descriptive terms, which imply abnormal morphology, they should not be used for normal physiological variation, like for a minor variation shape in shape and moderate variation in size, you should not be writing as an isopoikilocytosis. So that's why I'm stressing this. These are because in uh, neonates, the RBCs are normally, they have a uh, higher MCV than the adult RBC, but you don't describe them as macrocytic because they are normal for the neonates. Similarly, the children below 11 years, the RBCs are uh, smaller in size than the adult ones. And uh, these, again, you will not describe them as uh, microcytic. They are normocytic for that age group. And then anisopoikilocytosis, a certain degree of anisopoikilocytosis is normal for pregnant females and it should not be described as abnormal. So. For normal RBC morphology, normocytic, normochromic, compare it with the smallest lymphocyte. And just remember that minor variation shape and size is normal. And uh, you should not describe uh, normal physiological variations as abnormal findings. So uh, this image just shows that uh, my pointer is visible, right? Yeah, so uh, here you can see these areas, majority of them, they are showing around uh, like it is less than one third, but yes, these are normocytic RBCs. And this is just an electron micrograph image of the uh, normal RBC that is called discocyte. You can see this is a biconcave RBC. So the hemoglobin is on the periphery and the central area appears pale. So uh, before I go into the uh, details of the RBC's uh, shape and size abnormalities, since we are examining the uh, slide at first at 10x, what we first notice that the arrangement abnormalities, if they are there or not. So our normal arrangement, you know, they're lying side by side, not overlapping and all, but um, there are certain abnormalities that you have to keep in mind while, while you are screening the slide at 10X uh, magnification. So first is relay formation. In relay formation, the RBCs are staked in short or long single file chain, like a pile of coins. And here, what is important, just a 
um, smooth pointer to differentiate it from uh, agglutination that the individual RBC outlines, they are still visible in the relay formation. So uh, these, this relay formation increased, uh, normally you can see some degree of relay formation in the head end of the uh, slide PBF, but it should not be there on the body and tail part. So it is seen in high protein, uh, which is high molecular weight, high protein states. Uh, most common causes are pregnancy where fibrinogen is increased, inflammatory conditions where polyclonal immunoglobulins are increased, and uh, plasma cell neoplasias where monoclonal paraprotein is the reason behind the relay formation. So, but it can also appear as an artifact when uh, a drop of blood that is left standing for too long on the slide before the smear has been made. So, uh, in that case also, you can see a pseudo increase in relay formation. You have to keep that also in mind. So this is an image from a multiple myeloma patient. You are seeing, can see these uh, RBCs, they are arranged in a pile of coins uh, shape. And then there is this background, which is appearing blue. The next abnormality of arrangement is agglutination. So in agglutinations, the cell are like uh, irregular ball-like clump formation, and the height and width of agglutination is roughly Ill equal. And to differentiate it from a relay formation, the individual RBC outline identifying that it is a little difficult. Again, reticulocytes, they may form normal agglutinates when they are increased in number. It is a normal phenomenon. And based upon that, it should not be called uh, the sample should not be called abnormal uh, because reticular sites have a tendency to agglutinate. But mature RBCs, they will only agglutinate when the, they are antibody coated. And massive agglutinates are commonly seen in cold agglutinin disease, but they can rarely be seen in warm agglutinin diseases also. So uh, this is an image showing uh, RBC agglutinates. You can see uh, the height and width is almost uh, equal and the individual RBC outline is difficult to identify. So this was about the abnormalities of the uh, arrangement. First, we uh, knew about, found out about the normal RBCs, what are the normal variation, and uh, then the abnormalities of the arrangement. Now we come to the size abnormalities. Analyzers value of MCV, which is considered more accurate in journal. So MCV reflects the size of the RBC, but and most of the times uh, that value is considered more accurate for the general assessment of RBC size, as I, uh, told in the previous uh, session that we have to compare the CBC findings with what we are seeing in the slide. So the analyzers, again, if you are feeling it is a slightly microcytic and but MCV is coming in the normal range, you should be uh, considering the uh, analyzer finding as the uh, one. But in cases where there is increased RDW, they are not reliable because see uh, MCV is calculated. It will just uh, calculate the size of the all the RBCs that it is uh, screening or counting and then take their sizes and add them and divide them by the number. So you will get a mean value. And that's why uh, this is uh, bound to be affected by the variation in the size. Like when there are cells which are like combined deficiency in the anemias where you are getting both microcytic and macrocytic populations, but still your MCV might be coming as normal only. So in those cases, uh, you should be relying on the morphology rather than the MCV that has been given by the uh, your w, uh, cell analyzer. Decrease in size, as we all know, it is called microcytic, and increase in size is called as uh, macrocytic RBCs. What is important when you are looking for the size abnormalities is that you check for dual population, that is dimorphism. It may be missed if it is not assessed at the low power initially. Like I said, always, always assess the size of the uh, RBCs at 10x because here you are seeing more and more number of cells much more larger number of cells than the uh, what you are seeing in the 40x and that will help you better examine or better uh, evaluate or better decide what is the predominant size of the rbcs and uh, you might actually miss the dual population if you are not seeing it at low power initially So it is necessary to describe both populations. So whenever you are seeing two population, it is important that to describe them both. It is recommended that you describe both the population separately. 
and they are commonly seen in uh, combined deficiencies in emias or a, a patient of iron deficiency anemia who has been therapy or sideroblastic anemia or a patient of uh, iron deficiency who has been transfused so this is an image that has been taken uh, at tenex and here you can clearly see these cells these are microcytic hypochromic cells and then there are the second population is there which is perfectly uh, normocytic this is a case of microcytic hypochromic anemia which has been transfused with uh, pect rbc and that's why you are getting these dual population in treatment you usually uh, in this case you will get a double peak on your uh, rbc histogram but in cases where you are seeing uh, were partially treated cases of iron deficiency there is a graded like there are some cells which are like really microcytic then there are some in between and then there will be normocytic cells and also there will be some macrocytes because the reticulocytosis will be there so in that case uh, multiple peaks are not there there is some a broad based curve is there but in these case where the transfusion is there so it's again a soft pointer it's not always true but it's a soft pointer whether this dual population is because of the therapy or because of the transfusion anis what is anisocytosis anisocytosis is a non specific abnormality that is increased variability of the size beyond that is observed in uh, normal subjects like i said a moderate variation in size is normal so if you are seeing something beyond that then you will call it anisocytosis and uh, it is reflected by reflected by increased rdw on the cell analyzer and anisocytosis is an indication to uh, make a peripheral blood smear like we discussed last time so first abnormality of size is uh, microcytosis it can be generalized or it can be confined to a smaller population the microcytes if it is generalized then your mcv will be decreased and if it is confined to a smaller population then like i said your mcv may be normal when you are getting multiple populations and then you have to remember that like i previously told rbcs of uh, children they are physiologically smaller than adults so please please don't call them microcytic just because the mcv is coming as 72 or 73 they are normocytic that is the normal range for them the common causes of microcytosis are iron deficiency anemia thalassemia and severe cases of uh, anemia of chronic disease so anemia of chronic disease usually present as a uh, normocytic normochromic anemia but when it is severe it can lead to a uh, microcytic hypochromic anemia as also so so again you need to remember one very very important thing that microcytosis is very very uncommon in neonates because their normal mcv is higher than what is we see in in the adults and it is much higher in the preterm uh, neonates than the term so the mcv is like regularly beyond 100 so in that case if you are finding microcytosis in neonates it's highly uncommon and what does it indicate when it is present the uh, patient uh, it, the possibilities are it could be alpha thalassemia disorders it could be in utero iron deficiency or it could be uh, we could be dealing with congenital sideroblastic anemia so it should be reported so this is just an image showing uh, like you see uh, i have taken this picture at uh, 10x so you are seeing a huge number of rbcs which you will not see at 40x so just remember this assess the size of the rbcs at 10x at low power so here you can see this i have searched for the small lymphocyte so this is the one of the smallest lymphocyte i, I could find and uh, just see at the nucleus size and then compare the rest of the rbcs which are there all of them are microcytic and so that's why this is a, a case of a microcytic hypochromic anemia that is was because of iron deficiency so you can uh, like i said focus on an 10x find the smallest lymphocyte and they can compare the size yeah so next size abnormality is uh, macrocytosis again like um, microcytosis it can be generalized or can be seen in the smaller population generalized the mcv will be increased or uh, if it is in the smaller population mcv may be normal and then like in the children the rbcs of uh, children they are physiologically smaller the rbcs of neonates they are physiologically larger than the adults and much much larger in fetal life and preterm neonates 
So again, the in the adult population, the slight microcytosis is physiological in pregnancy and older adults. So in all these things also you need to keep in mind before calling a population as macrocytic. The common causes of macrocytosis are megaloblastic anemia, liver diseases, myelodysplastic syndrome, alcoholism, aplastic anemia, hemolytic anemia. As the list is long, I just uh, included some common causes for that. So, but again, in macrocytes, there are some abnormalities that you need to uh, focus on that you just, you are saying, okay, predominantly macrocytic population is there. My uh, analyzer is giving uh, me higher MCV, so it is macrocytic, but in macrocytic itself, uh, you can suggest some differential diagnosis. So that's why you need to focus what is the shape, what is the color and all. So if the macrocytosis, degree of macrocytosis is more, or if it is more than uh, 110 femtoliter, or if it is less than 110 femtoliter. So megaloblastic anemias, if it is more than 110 femtoliter, it's most likely you are dealing with the case of megaloblastic anemia, while in the liver diseases, MDS, alcoholism, plastic anemia, it is usually less than 110 femtoliter. Again, I would say it's not a um, hard and fast tool. It's just a soft pointer, but a degree of macrocytosis uh, can help you in the differential diagnosis. The other thing that you can notice is outline, whether it is round or oval. So round microcytes, they are commonly found in uh, these uh, liver disease and alcoholism and all these. Uh, and if their oval microcytes are there, they are highly, highly suggestive of megaloblastic anemia. So again, the outline also can suggest the differential diagnosis. And a color, whether they are orthochromatic, like they are looking like the normal RBCs, or if they are polychromatic. So polychromatic RBCs, the uh, macrocytes, polychromatic macrocytes, you will find in cases of hemolytic anemia, while other causes where the, um, there is ineffective erythropoiesis and all, you will find them as orthochromatic. So all these things, just not macrocytes. Macrocyte will give a, a broad differential diagnosis. If you focus on these other, further go down in the macrocytosis, looking at degree and the outline and color, you can further narrow down your differential diagnosis just by looking at the peripheral smear. So this is just to what I have just now told. Uh, this is just to uh, de actually demonstrate it. The first two images are from the uh, a case of megaloblastic anemia. Here you can see these oval macrocytes are there, like many, many oval macrocytes are there. So these are uh, indicator of that you are dealing with a um, megaloblastic anemia. Again, this hypersegmented neutrophil and a megaloblast in the circulation. There are uh, normally we call them as NRBCs, but you can also specify whether they are looking as normoblastic or megaloblastic. So, so these, this is a megaloblast that has been there in the peripheral smear. So these two smears belong to a patient of uh, megaloblastic anemia. This third image is from a patient where the macrocytosis was because of alcoholic liver disease. You will see, compare this. These are ovelocytes. Here, all of them are like round. So these are uh, round macrocytes and then there are stomatocytes. So this indicates uh, macrocytosis because of the alcoholic liver disease. The fourth image is from a case of uh, hemolytic anemia. You can see many, many polychromatophils. They are there larger than the normal RBCs. These normal RBCs like twice the size of these. And uh, they obviously will lead to the increase in MCV. So by just looking at uh, macrocyte morphology, just, you, when your analyzer giving the MCV is higher and then you are looking at the PBF, you can further narrow down the diagnosis just by uh, looking at the findings that you are seeing. So in the size abnormalities, we knew what is anisocytosis. In anisocytosis, you need to make a smear, microcytosis, when to call it micro and what, when to not call it microcytes and uh, microcytosis in the same way. Now we will uh, go ahead with uh, abnormalities of chromasia. First is hypochromasia. So in this, when you call it uh, an RBC as hypochromic, when the central pallor is more than one third of the RBC parameter. And MCHC is the related uh, RBC index for that, not MCH. Some books say that MCH, but MCHC is the related RBC index for the hypochromasia. These are commonly seen in conditions associated with microcytosis, like iron deficiency, anemias, and thalassemias. But there are certain ex exceptions. 
like in our trait alpha and beta thalassemia trait you can find microcytosis without appreciable hypochromia in some cases not all and then in rare cases of copper deficiency hypochromia present with can be present with macrocytosis also usually the macrocytes are uh, normochromic but if you are seeing uh, macrocytes which are hypochromic then you might be uh, dealing with a case of copper deficiency again uh, i will just mention that uh, because in the last time that we talked about uh, hydration artifact so uh, the border between the strained area and central pallor it should show gradual progression gradual progression means uh, lightly stained a little darker 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 and more darker so it should be uh, showing a great gradual progression not just like the punched out appearance very sharply demarcated areas of hypochromic and hypochromic areas that is because of the hydration artifact so you should be aware of this pitfall that hydration artifact can cause so here you can see these are two images one is uh, from the patient who is actually had R hypochromic rbc's the other one is because of the hydration artifact here you can see there are clearly punched out holes like areas so this pa central part is like exactly hypochromic no showing not showing any stain and the periphery is very very dense in staining but here in these cases like in this one in this one and this one you can see there is a gradual progression from here it is very very light then it starts becoming darker and darker and on the periphery it is most dense so this gradual uh, progression of uh, chromasia is very important and then only please call them hypochromic only when you are seeing this gradual uh, kind of um, decrease in uh, increase decrease in staining so not like the punched out artifact of the hydration artifact So the two possible causes why cells appear hypochromic. One is the hemoglobin is lowered. The conditions where uh, hemoglobin either heme synthesis is decreased, like in iron deficiency anemia and citroblastic anemia, or like there is globin synthesis that is decreased, like in thalassemias. So another cause may be because the RBC is thinner than the normal. These cells are called leptocytes and uh, seen in severe cases of iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia and liver diseases. And in these, the cells appear as thin rings of membrane with little hemoglobin and large unstrained central area. So this is an image of a leptocyte. You can see it's just looking like a membrane. There are more cells which are uh, like hypochromic and all. But this cell is called leptocyte, just a thin membrane because it's a thinner cell than the rest of the thing. So in, sometimes uh, they also can appear hypochromic without cells being actually hypochromic. Hyperchromia, the other end of the chromasia, one is hypochromia, the other end is hyperchromia. It is a rarely used term. We don't write cells as hypochromic. It just describes the cells which are more densely stained than the normal, and the cells are like spherocytes and schistocytes. Sometimes the macrocytes appear thicker than the normal because, uh, and they lack the central pallor. But we don't usually uh, describe cells as hyperchromic. We just write them as either normochromic or as hyper hypochromic. Another abnormality of chromasia is uh, polychromasia. That is, uh, they can also be, I mean, the ICSH recommends that they should be write, written as uh, polychromatophilic cells. So uh, they stain pinkish blue. Poly is uh, multiple chromasia means color. So they have multiple colors. They don't have just a single color. So they stain pinkish blue due to uptake of both. Say there are two components of the uh, Romanovsky stain. One is eosin and other is uh, a basic dye that stains the uh, nuclear elements. So eosin will be staining the hemoglobin and uh, because uh, the RBC also contain uh, residual RNA that will be stained with uh, basic dye. It represents the most immature reticulocytes. Yes, it represents the reticulocytes, but not every reticulocyte will appear uh, polychromatic. Only the reticulocytes, which are the most immature ones, they will appear uh, polychromatic and it just indicates a compensatory increase in erythropoiesis. Normally, 
the polychromatophils are uh, less than 0.1% in uh, normal adults. But in comparison, the normal reticulocyte count being 1% to 2%. So you can just imagine that when you are seeing 0.1% of the polychromatophils, then the like if you are seeing 1%, the reticulocyte count is would be uh, proportionately high. Normally, they are like one tenth of the uh, uh, reticulocyte count. So they are increased in hemolytic anemias as well as therapy response in the deficiency anemia. So it's just said that whatever uh, polychromatophil count that you are seeing, normally the reticulocyte food count would uh, come as uh, like three, four times of that. They are considerably larger than the normal RBCs and the uh, are very, very irregular shaped. As compared to the this, the late reticulocytes, they are more regular in shape and they are indistinguishable for the mature RBCs, except their slightly larger size. So you need to remember this, that uh, these polychromatophils, they are very larger than the uh, RBCs and the shapes are usually very, very irregular. In the next image, you will uh, see how these polychromatophils, they look like. So this is an image from... Uh, case uh, was it was a case of um, sickle cell anemia that was having an acute hemolytic crisis and here you are seeing these uh, shapes they're like very very irregular shaped polychromatophilic cells so the this corresponds with the electron micrographic image of this, this reticulocyte. So these are the polychromatophils here. There's some NRBCs are also there. So they are much larger than the normal RBCs. See, almost two to three times larger than the normal RBCs and the shapes are very, very irregular. There's two special situations in uh, polychromasia. One is blue poly polychromatophils that just indicates unusually young reticulocytes because normal polychromatophils, they are like pinkish blue in color. But you are if you are getting like really blue polychromatophils, they will just indicate the RNA content is very high. And they are seen when there is intense erythropoietic drive like uh, acute hemolytic crisis or uh, if there is an extra medullary hematopoiesis like I have seen in uh, myelofibrosis and cases where there is some bone marrow infiltration is there. And the other special situation is absence of polychromasia. Polychromasia, when it should be present and it is not there, it indicates bone marrow failure. So in severe anemias, if you are not getting any polychromatophils, it represents inadequate bone marrow uh, responses. So absence of polychromasia in case of severe anemia, it might uh, indicate to the diagnosis of aplastic anemia or pure red cell aplasia. It would be very less or in conspicuous in cases of uh, anemia of chronic disease and renal failure where the erythropoietin drive will be low. So in that cases, despite of the patient being severely anemic, the polychromatophils will not be there. So just remember severe anemia, no polychromatophils, you might be dealing with aplastic anemia or pure red cell aplasia. In case of sickle cell anemias and other hemolytic anemias, when you regularly see increased polychromatophils, if they are absent there, they may indicate a complicating parvovirus B19 inspection. So these are two special conditions about the polychromatophils that you need to keep in mind. abnormalities of shape is called poikilocytosis. I'm sorry, I think I have just, uh, yeah. So poikilocytosis is defined as increase in proportion of cells with abnormal shape. So uh, as I said, minor variation in shape is normal, but if it is more than that, then it will be called poikilocytosis. It may either result from a production of abnormal shaped RBCs, by the bone marrow itself or damage to the normal cells after the release in the bloodstream. So there are some uh, different morphological features that we will find in the, uh, when the damage has uh, like the shape, it was like already abnormal when they were coming out of the bone marrow or uh, where, whether they were damaged once they have reached the bloodstream. So extreme poikilocytosis, it is found in, uh, when you are seeing the, some, there are some differential diagnosis for extreme poikilocytosis, like primary or secondary myelofibrosis, congenital and acquired dyserythropoietic anemias, hereditary pyropoikilocytosis, and HBH disease. And it is very important that you uh, do not confuse the deformation of RBCs by plasma abnormalities with true poikilocytosis. Just, I will show an image just to, uh, uh, explain what what I'm trying to say here. 
So this is an image from a patient of uh, hereditary pyropoikilocytosis. Here you can see that this different, different sizes, they're different, different shapes and they're different chromasia and everything is there. So if you remember in the last session also, we uh, showed a case of uh, accidental heating of blood sample. There also you will find this extreme degree of uh, poikilocytosis. So this is one condition when the pyro hereditary pyropoikilocytosis, when uh, this extreme poikilocytosis is actually there. The second image is uh, from a patient where the cryoglobulins are there in the uh, blood and you, what you are seeing here, if you look at them carefully, they are not actually uh, like shape abnormality. There is some material which is lying over these cells. So you should be uh, aware of this before calling them uh, as poikilocytosis. So first shape, I'll first be talking about uh, the abnormality of shape that has been caused uh, by the damage in the da damage to the RBCs once they have reached the blood film. So first is uh, spherocytosis. So as the name suggests, they are spherical in shape and they are spherical because of the loss of membrane without loss of cytoplasm, okay? So the cytoplasm is still of the same amount, but the membranes has uh, become uh, smaller. So then they will become spherical. So just remember the RBCs normally they have uh, they are a disc shape, they are biconcave shape. So they already carry a membrane that is in excess with the, what the cytoplasmic volume is. So already the membrane is in excess normally. And why the cell requires no excess membrane? Because it need to be highly deformable to uh, travel through the capillaries and all. So, but, so that's why it can manage with that little bit of uh, membrane less le loss of membrane it can manage with that so but the cells will become uh, spherical just to uh, uh, carry that same amount of cytoplasm so it could be uh, either hereditary like in hereditary spherocytosis or it could be acquired so how do you describe a spherical spherocyte morphology it is a round cell with smooth contours what is important it lacks central pallor like i previously told it is one of the cells which are hyperchromic the diameter is less than a discocyte of same volume, okay? So the volume will be same, but the diameter will be less because the membrane has been lost. So again, it is very important before calling a cell spherocyte, you make sure that the, you are examining the area where the cells are just touching each other and not the tail because at the tail, all cells will appear like a, a spherocyte. Then there is one special situation, microspherocyte. It is seen in uh, clostridial sepsis, burns, and autoimmune hemolytic anemias. So as uh, the term itself is suggesting, microspherocytes, they are uh, smaller in size than the normal spherocyte. Uh, pardon, there are no normal spherocytes, but uh, it, what we are seeing in the hereditary spherocytosis, they are smaller than that. Like in said, I, I said that uh, the volume will remain the same, just the diameter will be less. So that will be uh, the spherocyte that is seen in the hereditary spherocytosis, while the microspherocyte is a cell when the volume is also reduced and not just the diameter. I will just show an image to, uh, yeah. It is useful to distinguish between spherocytes of normal size and microspherocytes because it has a diagnostic significant uh, different. So if you can look at this uh, two slides, which we are seeing, uh, one slide is for hereditary spherocytosis, and you can very well appreciate the spherocytes which are present in between. They are like, uh, there is lack of central pillar and they are of uniform size if you compare in between. But when you see uh, acquired cause of spherocytosis, which is usually autoimmune hemolytic anemia, then very, there you can appreciate there is variation in size of the spherocytes. Okay, so uh, that would be all. And uh, if you have any queries, you can ask now, or uh, if you want, you can put your question in the group and I will try to personally answer you. So with that, uh, that would be all for today. So I'll be ending the meeting and uh, see you next time.